Hello, everyone, and welcome to our third Up Level Live session. Um, I'm super excited to be doing this session with Lauren Berger. I think we've known each other now for probably about 12 years, yeah. which is crazy to think. And um, just really thrilled to, to have you here and, you know, be able to discuss, you know, what it means to successfully pivot your career, especially right now in Corona times. And so mm -hmm. let me just do a bit of housekeeping with everyone. So first and foremost, you're going to see the chat on the right hand side of the screen. Feel free to chat, connect with other people, um, you know, whatever kind of comments you want to leave there. But if you are really interested in asking questions for Lauren, you're going to see the bottom of your screen that says, ask a question. So put your questions in the ask a question section. That way everyone can jump into that section, upvote different questions so that we can start to, you know, put the ones that are most important first, just by, you know, crowd polling, if you will. And so remember chat is to the right. Ask a question is below. A couple of other things is um, just to give you, for those of you that are new here, um, what we are all about. So I am the co-founder of UpLevel. We are a micro learning online experience. We go live every Wednesday with a new thought leader in the space of either career or entrepreneurship because we want to help all of you be able to up level, whether it is your career or your business or even your life right now. Um, I think we could all use a little bit of up leveling, you know, empowering right now just to really have a sense of like positivity and hope. And so that's what up level um, is all about. Um, and let me give my awesome intro to Lauren for those of you that don't know her. So Lauren Berger is CEO and founder of both CareerQueen.com and InternQueen.com, reaching over 9 million people and connecting them with their dream careers. Her newest book, Get It Together, Ditch the Chaos, Do the Work, Design Your Success, is a super practical guide to personal success and is packed with no-nonsense tips that will get anywhere where they want to be in their business and life. Lauren has been featured um, as a keynote speaker at over 200 plus colleges, talking about leadership, entrepreneurship, and female empowerment. Her previous titles uh, for her books include best-selling All Work, No Pay, and Welcome to the Real World. Berger's YouTube channel has over 2.6 million views and features over 200 career advice videos. Her Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn reach nearly 200,000 young people. If I might say so myself, Lauren, your LinkedIn alone reaches 200,000 people. So mm -hmm. I'm sure your audience is actually uh, larger across all of your social profiles. Her career and entrepreneurship advice has been featured on Business Insider, Forbes, Straight Up Stassi, Well and Good, <laughs> Teen Vogue, Thrive Global, The Today Show, KTLA, Good Day LA, Incel.com, and many more. In addition to her career queen and intern queen brands, Berger also launched and oversees the Intern Queen Campus Agency, which helps brands activate her network of college students on campuses worldwide. Clients of the agency include Whole Foods, Keurig, Duncan Hines, Estee Lauder, and more. Lauren, if I have forgotten anything, <laughs> or if you want to add anything there, you know, please go ahead. Um, I also wanted to just quickly give a little bit more insight into, uh, you know, your career and your brands. So if you could tell the audience, um, why did you start Intern Queen? Sure. Um, so I started Intern Queen 
I mean, I started it senior year of college because I had a ton of internships and nobody else around me was interning. I went to the University of Central Florida, which is a great school, a huge school. But I would say that when I was there, there was not a strong internship culture, not like you hear about in the Northeast or wherever. So I was really left to my own <laughs> um, findings to find internships, leverage them and try to make the most of them. And I remember thinking, man, why, are, why aren't there more resources for my friends who want to intern? Why aren't there more resources for myself? I'm trying to figure out how to be a better intern. Whenever I would go to the bookstore or try to find information, I always came up short. So I started Intern Queen originally to help students get positive career advice. I wanted to help young people like myself. And I figured after a ton of internships, I could try my best to um, kind of navigate and figure it out. Um, and you know, that has now catapulted over the past 12 years. Now we're able to we reach over 20 million students at 6,000 colleges and universities. Yeah. And I think what's m even more exciting for the audience and the people that are tuning in today is that we also launched Career Queen, which is a big sister brand to Intern Queen. So. Yeah. With our Career Queen network, it's just like Intern Queen, where it's totally free for you to use. Um, we have tons of resources. We're profiling interesting men and women um, from all different industries constantly, and really just trying to cultivate this network of young people who are trying to either get their first job, get their fifth job, or get promoted at work. So excited to uh, be here today and talk a little bit about career, a little bit about entrepreneurship, and um, be helpful in any way I can. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, now, even though we are going through this year, which is a very interesting year for all of us, but looking over the course of all your years running your business, what has been the most challenging thing about it? That's an interesting question. So I've been running Intern Queen now full time for almost 12 years. And I think, you know, if someone were to ask me, was this our most challenging year? I don't know. It's interesting. I don't know that I would say yes. I mean, this year, as we all know, has has challenged all of us in ways we never thought we'd be challenged. But I think in general, overall big picture, I don't know that this is the one year that's the most challenging that we've ever experienced. I think overall as a business owner, the most challenging thing has been that some years are up and some years are down and some years are flat and that's okay. And I think the first year, I don't remember what year it was, but the first time that we had a down year, I thought, oh, I am a complete failure. Like this is not good. I went down. And what other business owners that had been in the game longer than I had told me is like, oh yeah, buckle your seatbelt because you're gonna have a lot more down years than that, right? right. It might not all be at once, but that's gonna happen. And so I think one of the biggest challenges as a business owner has been understanding that a down year is okay. And like everybody said, it's probably gonna happen again. And a flat year is okay. And a good year is, is great, but it's also okay. So it's just being okay when things aren't always on the up. I think with things like Instagram and just, you know, how we all sort of communicate these days. We're always talking about our successes and we're shamelessly promoting ourselves and talking about our best days and that's great. But the reality is that th there's a lot of down days too, right? And there's a lot of days that are just kind of flat days and, and that's okay. So I think understanding yeah. that and wrapping my head around it has been the biggest challenge as a business owner. Yeah, definitely. So just before we start your presentation on how to successfully pivot your career now, just want to remind everyone, uh, you know, I would love, or both of us would love to know where you're from. So in the chat section, just yeah. do a shout out. Where are you from? Are you from the U.S.? Are you from outside the U.S.? You know, what state, what city are you, you know, coming in from? So, all right, we have Kate from Chicago. Big up to Chicago. Los Angeles. Yes, well, you're there. <laughs> okay, awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. It's exciting to just know where everyone is tuning in from. So, yes, please tell me, tell us where you're tuning in from. And remember, down <laughs> below, click, ask a question. Put all your questions in there. That way we can separate what's happening in the chat section with people that really want to be able to ask Lauren a question at the end of her presentation. And then the biggest thing is, is 
We're giving away not one, not two, but three copies of Lauren's new book, Get It Together. So we are going to randomly pick three people from the audience at the very end. And then obviously we will coordinate by email afterwards so that we can get you the copy of the book. So without further ado, I am going to share my screen and I'm going to pull up your presentation. So if everyone will bear with me for one second as I get that done. But someone's from Toronto, my hometown. Boop, boop. <laughs> mm -hmm. Really excited about that. We have someone from New Jersey, from Nebraska. Uh, these, this is why I love the internet. <laughs> yeah, this is cool. It's super accessible. Yeah, yeah, and then exactly. as I'm talking, everybody, feel free to put things in the chat box, and I'm happy to kind of, you know, tangent a little bit one way or another. If there's something I say that you want more information on, happy to uh, dive in a little bit deeper. Yeah, okay, so the presentation just opening up. Let me now share my screen. One second. Okay. Lauren, can you let me know if you see that? Yeah, I see it. This is great. Perfect. Now, let me get into presentation mode. Great. Okay, we're getting there. <laughs> no worries. And I hope I don't seem to be wanting to do presentation mode. One second. Okay. Awesome. So shall we jump in? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, cool. So we can go ahead and go to the first slide. Yep. Well, this is pretty simple, you guys. It just says we thought this year. Well, actually, I'll talk about this a little bit. Um, so we thought this year would be one thing. It's clearly not what we thought. It's nothing close. Right. And um, just to share a little bit about what I've been going through personally, and some of you know this, some of you don't. So I um, I had a baby this year about uh, she's actually like three months and two weeks. So pretty recently. And um, in January, I remember being at New Year's Eve dinner with friends and we were making all these New Year's resolutions and thought that it was going to be a super normal year. I was talking about what I was going to do about daycare. Was I going to get a nanny? Like, how was I ever going to handle having a baby and running a business, you know? And um, clearly this year was was not that, right? I, I don't even need, now I just have a baby around me all the time. I don't need daycare or a nanny. That's not even a thing people are doing right now. So it's just been such a different year um, for me both personally and professionally. And I'm sure that all of you from all over the country and all over Canada have similar experiences. I'm sure we could all talk about like what New Year's resolutions we were making in January and like, wow, that shifted, right? And um, I think something that's helpful to remember is that whole hashtag, um, hashtag alone together, right? Which, which I think really just means that we're not going through this alone. And just like I, you know, thought this year was going to be one thing and it's, it looks different for me. I know it has for all of you too. And I do think that there's some comfort and solace in all of that. So just know that like they say, it's okay to not feel okay. And we are in this together. And um, hopefully in this presentation, I can give you guys some tangible uh, action steps and things to think about as, as our 2020 just keeps going. <laughs> so uh, we can go to the next slide. Okay, so I wanna talk about the challenges here that we're facing and then some solutions. And I'm gonna go through this deck. It'll probably take us about 15 minutes or so. So it'll be pretty quick. And then I wanna go through questions. And like I said, as I'm talking, I can see the chat. So feel free to um, jump in if there's anything that uh, you want me to expand upon. So one of the challenges that I think we all face, um, me as a business owner, you guys as business owners, or as just job seekers trying to find the next opportunity is we can't see the future. And I think 
if you guys are looking for jobs, which I know a lot of you are, I think always hearing the business owner perspective on this is, is somewhat helpful. I talk to my friends who are looking for jobs about this all the time. You know, as a business owner, the reason why it's hard to hire right now um, isn't necessarily because, you know, everyone thinks that every business has like no money, right? And everyone's bankrupt and all these things. It's not necessarily that, depending on who you're talking to, but it's just that we don't know what the future is going to bring. So, you know, to an extent every year, you know, we, as again, as the owner of a business, I go into every year, I don't know, I'm not a magician or a, um, a card reader. I don't know what that year is going to bring, but I can look at previous years and I can look at trends and I have an idea of when our numbers are going to go up and when they're going to go down. I have an idea of who's going to spend and when they're going to spend and who's not going to spend. So I can plan, right? So when I want to hire people, I have a sense of the business we're going to have. Right now, I can't see very far into the future, which is very limiting and very scary as a business owner because without knowing what's coming in the future, you can't plan for the future, meaning that it can be very hard to make decisions, right? The more you can plan ahead, the more decisions you can make. And so what's happened to myself and a lot of other businesses is we can't plan ahead. And so it limits us from being able to make decisions. And hiring is ultimately a decision. So I think, um, again, I'm a small business. We have about 10 people that work at our company. If you're interviewing for businesses of a similar size and you're not hearing back or you feel like they're moving slowly, this might be some helpful perspective that the reason for that is they're trying to plan ahead. They're trying to see what business is going to come down the pipeline this year so that they can confidently make those hiring decisions. You know, our CFO always says that hiring someone one is hard, right? Giving someone a raise is hard because those are permanent um, expenses, right? That's not just a one time, like I'm going to build a website, spend $10,000 and be done. This is a, I'm going to give someone money, right? This business is going to pay someone every two weeks for the rest of time, right? That's the kind of decision that you're making. So not being able to see the future is really limited limiting as a business owner. And I think that challenge is reflected upon you all, the job seeker. So again, um, what I'm doing to sort of navigate that within my business is I wouldn't say we're doing as drastic of a spending freeze as other companies are doing where it's like zero dollars. Like we're spending a little bit when and where we have to. But for the most part, we're being very conservative. Right. And I'm really trying to be a conservative decision maker. Um, I think all of us. Right. And I'm sure we have a lot of um, entrepreneurs on the phone right now. A lot of us want to be impulsive. Right. I love as a business owner, you always want to be a little bit of a risk taker, right? That's a little bit of the fun is like, let's take some risks here, right? But again, when the challenge is not being able to see ahead, I do recommend that everybody on here, when it comes to your fi finances, right? My job as a business owner is to oversee the finances at Intern Queen. It's not my department of expertise, but it's part of my job. Part of your jobs as job seekers is looking at your own financial um situations right and i would just encourage everybody to proceed with caution because everybody is challenged this year in that we cannot see what's ahead so we can um go on to the next slide all right challenge two um and this is something that again i think i face as a business owner and i think you all face as job seekers which is that sometimes your offerings don't make sense in this climate so what i mean by this is we're intern queen um we give college students and um recent grads and um, people going into their first kind of five jobs after college free advice um another offering that we have is we are a college marketing agency so every day i'm pitching brands trying to get them on the phone trying to find the right person at a brand to talk to and I'm trying to pitch our college marketing services. We used to do a lot of college events. Can't do a lot of college events now, right? And so what we've really had to do is think about our offerings and really pivot. So virtual events, which we're all in a virtual event now, seems to be working out pretty well for me. I'm at home in my kitchen. This is great, right? Um, seems to be working well for you guys. Um, but we've had to pivot our offerings and really double down on our digital offerings, our social media offerings, and our... Um, virtual events. And we had to think on our feet quickly. We had, I think, 30 events planned in person in March. And 
within a day, you know, they were all canceled and brands had paid us. So we had to quickly pivot and figure out what we were going to do for them. That was going to be really valuable. So again, I'm trying to draw parallels here between me, the business owner and you guys, the job seeker. Were you trying to pursue a career in, I don't know, let's pick an industry that's not doing great right now. Um, I would say high end fashion, tricky, right? I would say travel and hospitality, tricky event planning, difficult, right? So I think, if you guys are feeling challenged because the industry or the positions that you were going after don't make too much sense right now, I challenge you to pivot and innovate and really um, shift your offerings. You know, really think, um, th let's say, for example, you got laid off from a job within the travel industry, right? But a lot of your job was sales based. Salespeople are few and far between, hard to find great salespeople. Think about what industry you could go into that is booming right now and how you could apply those sales skills that you use in your travel job to other industries. So I think thinking about those transferable skills, I'll probably mention that in a little bit as well. But um, again, how can you pivot your offerings? We can go on to the next slide. All right. Now, I think this slide is, is more about mental health and stability, right? You feel like it's your fault. And I think, again, as a business owner, as a job seeker, if you guys are being furloughed, if you're being laid off, if you're looking for a job, maybe you got your job offer rescinded, um, the opportunity you thought was going to be your big New York City job is now virtual, whatever your situation is, I think we've all felt like at some point, right, we've all felt like... Um, we've all felt like it's all it's all of our fault right like we did something um and now we're going to um i don't know we're going to be destroyed because of it so my advice to you guys and this is just more of a mental health thing is try to separate yourself from the current situation try to separate yourself from the current situation this is not your fault you know instead i challenge you to say how can i better react to this situation we can go on to the next slide. All right, so another challenge that we spoke about is job offers being rescinded during this time. Um, at Intern Queen, just in all honesty and transparency, we had to rescind a job offer during this time. That was one of the worst things that I've ever had to do as an entrepreneur. I never in a million years thought that we would have to rescind a job offer from someone. So I do want to let you guys know that from an employer side, it's just as awful as getting that email. Nobody wants to do that. My advice to you guys though, is to stay in touch with the person who rescinded the job offer. Stay in touch with the person who rescinded the job offer, because I'm telling you, had the person that I offered the job to done a great job of staying in touch with me, I would have done everything in my power to bring them back on. So I think that's something that's really important to think about. Even if you're getting furloughed and laid off, these are not decisions that companies want to make. These are terrible last ditch effort decisions that companies feel like they have to make in order to stay in business. Nobody wants to do this. So I really recommend that everybody stays in touch. And like I said, think about that transferable skill set. Um, and also setting informational meetings. We haven't talked about that much yet, but setting informational meetings is something everyone should be doing regardless of the place you're at within your career. We can go on to uh, the next slide. Okay, so feeling frustrated, we've talked about this a lot. Um, rejection is something that happens at every level in your career career, right? Um, I used to think that getting rejected was something that was exclusive to people just starting out. I thought, okay, I'm going to get rejected as an intern, rejected as a job seeker, but then it's just going to be smooth sailing. And as I said at the beginning of this, a big challenge for me as a business owner has been realizing that there's a lot of ups and downs that you encounter throughout your career, right? So I think try to, you're feeling frustrated. We know everybody is right in their own way and just try to stay positive try to 
try to flip this situation. Who knew we'd have so much time to just spend at home and by ourselves? I used to feel pre-2020 so caught up in what I called the busy race, right? I felt like as a female entrepreneur, there was so much pressure to always be in front of a millennial pink wall, drinking iced coffee, looking like I didn't have a care in the world, right? And I felt like I had to speak at all the conferences and do all the things. Otherwise, I didn't look or feel successful. And that was such a backwards mentality. We're all so lucky to, I think, get a chance to spend time on ourselves, right? I mean, personally, I told you guys about the baby. I didn't know I was going to get this much time with my child. I mean, this is really special in a way. So I do think it's an opportunity where we can all take classes, challenge ourselves, grow, et cetera. Um, and, and we can kind of talk to people about the kinds of jobs they have, what they do all day, and you know, give yourself time. If you had given yourself three months to get a job, double it. Give yourself six months because um, it, it is challenging out there and it's okay to feel frustrated. We can go on to the next slide. That was all the slides we had. Okay, so um, well, let me just uh, th wrap this wrap this up, and then we'll go into questions. But again, I think that it's a it's a weird time, right? We all know that's not new, but it's okay. Um, something that I've been using um, to help inspire people that are frustrated about the job search is I've been telling everyone to go to LinkedIn, and on LinkedIn you can click on um, it'll say my network, and it'll you'll see the updates of everybody in your network. And again, I do have a lot of connections on LinkedIn, so maybe I see this more so than others. But every time I look look at LinkedIn, every single day, there are 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 people who are either getting promoted at work, who are getting hired, and it's not just in these like super niche industries that are booming right now. It's not just at Zoom, you know? Um, I'm seeing a lot of people getting hired and a lot of movement happening. So I think there's a, you know, this myth right now that no one is hiring. It's not true. And for me, LinkedIn has been a source of inspiration. I would encourage you guys to use LinkedIn to set informational interviews, of course, but also to you know, reach out to people in your network who are getting hired and just ask them what their story was. Like I reached out to, um, we had a girl that graduated from Arizona State and she got a job at a marketing company in Scottsdale. Her name is Lauren also. And I was like, Lauren, you need to tell me what you did here. Like, this is unbelievable that you landed a job in the middle of this and at a marketing agency, like tell me more. So I really encourage you to dig deep and try to um, learn from other people's stories because there might be some good um, job tips and tricks in there. Um, and so again, before we go into the questions, I'll just go over my contact information. It's it's here. Um, the easiest way to find me is Intern Queen Everything, right? So Intern Queen on LinkedIn, Intern Queen on uh, YouTube. Our YouTube channel will be helpful for those of you looking for jobs, not just internships. I don't want you to feel limited by the Intern Queen of it all. Um, but check it out. We, we've been making videos since 2015. So there's hundreds and hundreds of videos on there and you should find something that really helps you. We're known for our interview videos. So I think if you guys have any interviews coming up on Zoom, on the phone, definitely check out the Intern Queen YouTube channel. If you know anyone in college, send them there. But for those of you who are, you know, have moved on from college, at official career queen is um, the place to follow on Instagram and then careerqueen.com. And on career queen, you can actually, um, you'll write that you'll go there. It'll say, are you looking for a job? And then you'll insert your information. We are slowly starting to get into the job land. Um, and so we would love to help. So intern queen, um, I'll put it here too. careerqueen.com is the website. Um, to check out and then follow us on Instagram there. So um, I'd love to stay in touch. You can shoot me a note on LinkedIn. Um, just look up Lauren Berger. And, you know, I hope to be able to work with you guys and help advocate for you moving forward. So that's our presentation today. And I'm hoping we can spend some time, uh, Robin, diving into some questions. Yes. Thank you for that. That was awesome. And so let me click open the questions and also yeah. we had a couple, let's see here. Okay, so we have a couple of questions. So for one, this comes from uh, Tani and she said, how to convince an interviewer my transferable skills work with their job description? 
Yeah. So Tani, I love that you're asking that. And I mean, that it's funny. That's actually the advice, right? Is um, what I would do before an interview is I would print out that. And I say print out like we all have printers super accessible these days, which I know we don't necessarily have. Um, but, you know, look at the, you know, pull the job description up on your phone and then look at your resume. And I think what you're trying to do is you're basically trying to, before you go into the interview, you're trying to connect the dots. What are they looking for? And what do I have on my resume? And what skills or what experiences on my resume translate over the most to what they're looking for? I mean, in a way, it's not even about the industry or the company name, right? It's really about that job description and the specific like day to day that you'll be doing for that company and the similar experiences that you've had doing those things in the past. So in that interview, you really just want to be connecting the dots for the employer. So let's say you're applying for a social media director, right? Um, you might say in the interview, I know you're looking for a social media director. I've read the job description a hundred times and I see that you're looking for someone who's familiar with TikTok. And at my last experience, I actually built up the TikTok channel from scratch. I made sure that the company had content every week. I made sure that we were aligning ourselves with TikTok influencers. I'm, you know, up to date on all the TikTok trends and I can really help you guys, you know, get from where you are to where you want to be in that regard. So again, it's, thinking about what they're looking for and how what you have applies, you know, applies to that position. I know I gave the travel example earlier as well. So you just got laid off from your travel job, but maybe you worked in sales on the travel side. So your sales skills, your people skills, your relationship building, um, you've done a lot of events, like those skills will transfer over to other industries. Yep. This next question comes from Mariella. And she asks, hey, Lauren, could you tell us about the start of your career, particularly your time at CAA, even though the music industry is on hold at the moment? What is some good advice you have for succeeding at a talent agency? Yes, great question. Um, so, and I think her and I maybe spoke before this and I told her to come here and ask her questions. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, so I didn't mention this in my intro, but so my first job after college, I'm originally from Florida. I moved here right after college. I worked at CAA, um, the talent agency, um, one of the biggest talent agencies in the world. Absolutely. And what was it? Yeah, what was it like working there? So I will say that I, looking back, like I, I knew from informational interviews that a talent agency was a good place to start. I originally thought I wanted to be in the entertainment business. So I knew that it was a good place to start. Looking back, I don't even know what I thought an assistant at a talent agency does, because if you're just starting out, you're probably going to be an assistant there. And I just kind of threw myself into it. And I was I think I had the I can do anything mentality, like throw me into the fire. And I started working at this talent agency. And I had I mean, I had no idea what the heck I was doing. No idea. And I came out of college with all these internships. I had great connections. But in terms of the actual day to day of the job, I don't think that I really thought much about like, oh, I knew I had a cool job. I just don't think I really knew what I would be doing on a day to day at that job. Um, so I would say that it was really difficult because I was used to being sort of a big picture thinker. And I think today, one of the reasons I'm successful as a business owner is because I, I am that big picture thinker. And I always say, I'm not someone who, just personally speaking, cares if the rubber band is not in the rubber band drawer, right? I'm not super OCD about that stuff. I'm not, um, you know, I'm organized, but not in a meticulous way, I would say. And you really need to embrace that meticulous, detail-oriented, hyper-organized side of your brain in order to be successful in an, in an environment like CAA, especially at the assistant level, because it's basically your job to keep your boss's stuff, right? Their, their whole work life in order. And so it was really challenging for me because I just wasn't used to thinking or being challenged in that way. So I'll just give you a funny example my boss was meeting an actor for um, for lunch one day, and she told me to make reservations at um, Katsuya. So I Google Katsuya, and Katsuya um, Hollywood pops up, and I call them, and I make a reservation. And then she leaves, and I'm like, she's like, did you make a reservation at Katsuya? I'm like, yeah. And then she gets in her car, and she starts driving. And she gets to Katsuya in the valley because <laughs> I didn't know there were multiple Katsuyas. I'm from Florida. I didn't know Katsuya was a thing. And she's like, 
Lauren, I'm here. And not only is there not a reservation, but the client's not here. And it turned out that this actor, and I won't say who it was, but it was a really big deal, was sitting at the cut, like they were at different locations. And so oh, wow. and the reservations were wrong. So that's just an example of, you know, I wasn't, my brain wasn't programmed at that time to think in that way. So if you guys do have any internships, I do recommend, you know, asking to work on things like schedules and set it, you know, asking to set up a meeting for the first time to learn how to send a calendar invite. Like those are all little things that will be part of your job at a company like that. And the more practice you have before going in, the better. That's a, that's actually an excellent example <laughs> of like, yeah. you know, the, the simplest thing, right? Making your reservations and not really honing in on like the details. Of exactly. What actually entails. That's an excellent right. story. Okay. <laughs> So here's another question. This one comes from Kate. If you are broader, broadening your job search to areas outside of your current area of skill set, how do you manage applying to new roles that you may not have direct experience in while attempting to build skills in those areas? And I think that that is a vital question right now because I think people are really trying to figure out, especially right. if you've lost your job or you've been furloughed, whatever that looks like, that you're trying to broaden your horizons, right? You're trying to broaden, I think, your, your job search as much as you can. So I think that that is an excellent question. Yeah, I like that question too. And I'm trying to, you know, I'm putting myself in the, in the role of the employer, right? So I am, I'm, and I am, right? So I'm the employer, I'm interviewing someone whose skill set doesn't match the position that I'm applying for. Like, you know, to answer your question, like, what can that person do to get the job? And I think that, I think that number one, you have to be thoughtful about this, right? Because if someone applied, again, I'll just use the social media example. If someone applied for a social media role at Intern Queen, but had never done social media professionally for a company before, um, I think there's definitely a risk of just coming across as random. And although you might be just kind of throwing a bunch of things at the wall to see what sticks, which I totally understand and, and do as well, um, you don't want to come across like that, right? You don't want it to feel like, oh, I just woke up today and decided social media was going to be my life. Like that, as an employer, it would be hard for me to hire you because I would feel like, oh, I'm really taking a risk here. So I think what I would tell you to do is, um, Again, number one, be thoughtful about the situation that you're going into and make sure you're not coming across as like super random. I think number two, really think about your authentic story. Something is drawing you to a social media position at Intern Queen. Like, what is it? Like, what about this position excites you? Like, what kind of feeling are you getting in your gut that says, oh, I'm going to go after this position. You know, I'm going to go after an HR role where, you know, my whole career has been in marketing, but I'm going to shift to HR. Like, why? What is drawing you to that? And I think... Yes, skills are important, but you as an employer, you do want to hire people that are passionate about the work and that is hard to find. So I think that if you could convince me of like what is drawing you to this position and what inside of your gut is telling you that this is right for you, I would be as long as you can tell me in a way that's not going to take all day, right? Like let's get to the point and make it short, but tell me your authentic story. I do think that that would leave an impression on me as a hiring manager. Um, and then the third thing I'll say, and we talked about this earlier, I think with Tani's question was you got to connect the dots for the employer. I'm sure like you got to go fishing in the pond. What have you done? That's somewhat relevant. I'm sure there's something. And again, it goes back to what is drawing me to this position? You must have done something in your life or had some sort of experience that is within the wheelhouse of this position. And I would really think about that. And don't um, belittle any of your own experiences. I think we're all very quick to be like, oh, well, I did this one thing personally, but it wasn't a big deal. No, like, it, you know, be confident about that. Um, be confident about confident about all of your previous experiences. You know, maybe you're going to work, you want to work for a nonprofit, which you never thought in your life you would want to go do. But it's because when you were little, you had this really special experience, you know, at a, at a homeless shelter helping, you know, pass out meals, who knows, right? But like, tell us that authentic story and try to find something relevant within the wheelhouse of what that company does so that you can bring that to the forefront of the hiring manager's attention. Definitely. 
And um, I'm I'm gonna ask a question now, okay. but I'm gonna I'm gonna start with like a little bit of story because I've had to pivot several times. Um, sometimes it's because I really wanted to consciously, you know, make a change in my career. Other times it's because of my situation, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say my husband, we had to move to a new city, right? So then you really have to like acclimate yourself, right? To that new city, right? And then whatever opportunities might be there, especially if you can't transfer a job, right? To right. a new city, you know? So um, I would say, have you ever, you know, given that type of advice is what does like a pivot look like when you're actually moving to an entirely new city? What does that look like for someone? Now I'm very um, proactive, right? And so right. right away, what I would do is who do I know there, right? And then who can start connecting me with maybe either people, you know, in their company or even just other people that they may know as, you know, friends or acquaintances so that I can set up, like you mentioned in your presentation, yeah. informational meetings, right? Like, let's just go meet. I want to know more about you, the, you know, your the company that you work for. Are there any opportunities there? So what would be your advice to someone that now is not just pivoting their career, but they actually are forced to because they have to move to a new city. Right. I wrote down a lot. I was taking some notes as you were talking. So I have a couple pieces of advice there. So you mentioned, I think you're right. Like the first thing you're, the first thing I would probably do too, if I'm moving to a new city is I'd probably cover like Facebook, right? Cause you want to know, I feel like LinkedIn is work for, for me. Facebook has become like personal friends and family. Um, LinkedIn has become like work people, some of which I know, some of which like we crossed paths once and now we're LinkedIn friends. Um, and then, you know, Instagram, I probably wouldn't really lean on for something like this, but so I'd probably go to Facebook and LinkedIn and see who I know in that new city. Absolutely. And then like you, I would also, we have a lot in common. We, I probably try to set those informationals as well. I think in informational interviews, two pieces of advice that have come up recently, um, that I have for you guys that I think will be helpful. Number one is have a specific ask right? Like a lot of people will email me and say, I want to talk or like, I want you to help me. And I don't, I don't, I want to, do I want to help them? Check yes. Right. Absolutely. But I don't know what they, I don't know what I can do for them. So I think making sure that you have a specific ask is important as a businesswoman. I do a lot or business owner, I should say, I do a lot of informational interviews with like former CEOs where I'm asking them specific questions to take my business to the next level. And sometimes I think I'm guilty of like, I want help, but like, what does that mean? Like, how are they going to help me? So I think having a specific ask, whether it's to look at your resume, to introduce you to someone, to pass your resume to HR, like just go in with a specific ask. And I would try to focus on one specific ask because everyone's attention span is a little bit short. Um, and again, with informational interviews, people get nervous, but we had our big um, intern queen party event a couple of weeks ago. And one of That's our right. panelists, she said her advice was like shoot your shot and it's simple but I think it it's so important for all of us to remember that like you got to go shoot your shot like you put yourself out there you stay professional you stay polite and who knows like you might get rejected we talked about feeling frustrated but try to embrace that rejection and that's okay because I, I shoot my shot every day, guys. I email strangers all the time. And usually it doesn't work out. Usually people don't respond and they ignore me. But every time it does work out, every time I get a click, something really special happens. So you got to shoot your shot. Um, and then just a couple of other notes on what you said, Robin. Um, I think right now with COVID, a positive outcome has been that we all have more accessibility to jobs and opportunities than we've ever had before. Um, I was talking to a friend in Denver the other day. She's looking for social media jobs. That's why I kept using the social media example, but she's applying for really cool companies in New York City. And she wouldn't have been able to do that last year, but now she can because these companies aren't going back to the office anytime soon. So I do think that for those of you that are relocating or you lost your job or whatever it might, you know, whatever your situation is, um, there is a lot more accessibility now and people that, I mean, for years we were focused on building a team in Los Angeles. Um, we'd gotten away from the virtual hiring, but now, when we go to hire a paid intern for the semester, they can be from anywhere, right? right. So the accessibility factor is really huge. And then um, something that you said, you're really just looking for a sense of community 
in whatever new place you're in or if you just graduated college and moved home to start looking for a job or wherever it is. So I think you're looking for a community and the community doesn't have to be in person. Um, I keep using this example, but like I just had a kid, so I'm looking for mom friends, right? I don't have any mom friends yet. So if anyone knows any, send them my way. But um, you know, so I'm doing a mommy and me that's on Zoom. Um, yeah. We had a socially distanced park visit the other day, right? And I'm I'm just going with the times and going with the flow and I'm doing whatever I can to kind of find my community, if you will. So I would um, try to empower you guys to do the same thing when you're seeking jobs in specific industries. Like find that community and dive in and try not to let, um, you know, don't let things like Zoom fatigue get in your way. Yeah, exactly. Um we don't have more questions from the audience, but I sure have another question. Okay. Um, and I think especially when we're talking about pivoting. So today on LinkedIn, as just like a little preface to promote the session, I was talking about pivoting and what does pivoting mean, right? And it's a change in direction. And mm -hmm. I um, highlighted a couple of people and a couple of businesses. One was Shopify. So Shopify started as a, uh, a storefront. It was like an online snowboarding, right. you know, uh, uh, e-commerce site and it failed. It did right. miserably, but the design of the storefront was, uh, they loved it, right? The original founders loved it. And they're like, you know what, maybe we can actually sell, right? This designed storefront to other people, hence shopify right so that's just an interesting example yeah. of, of a business pivot but then there's someone like gwyneth paltrow which i mentioned right was an actor for most of her life and then boom launches goop no right really really understood like what is goop right? like what does it mean and yeah. it's such an incredibly successful media company and now they've got you know books and clothing and, and, and whatnot. stores and, I think, right yeah it's amazing and then vera wang was another example that i brought up right she she used to be a figure skater right and not a lot of people know that about her then she yeah. actually worked at vogue magazine and worked her way up to senior editor and then when she was getting married she hated all you know the the wedding dresses out there designed her own and then a year later at age 40 launched her own right store right? right and so i just think that those examples of pivoting are so important to be shared and to be told because i think most people are terrified to pivot it doesn't matter if it's from like department right so from like sales to marketing from like tech to healthcare or from a regular career to entrepreneurship so my question to you is um, do you feel that making that kind of change whether it's focused more on career or taking the leap in entrepreneurship do you think it's the same or would you give different tips um, to what those look like in terms of like, is I guess what you're asking is like, is pivoting as a job seeker the same as pivoting as a business owner sort of? Correct. Yeah, I, I mean, I think in, in broad terms it is, right? And I'm just thinking out loud, but I think it's like, you know, I, I explained how we've had to pivot as a business owner, but it's sort of when, when you pivot, or when we had to pivot, I can't speak to anybody else, right? We had to think like, what what is special about what we do and how can we continue doing it now that we're challenged by the current climate, right? And I think that's what you guys are doing, right? You're thinking, okay, here's what is so special about my experience and everything that I have to offer a potential company. Here's the types of things I was going after. Here's the challenge that that specific industry is facing. If you've had to pivot, maybe you guys don't really have to pivot because the industry you're going into is fine. I don't know. But you're basically trying to say like, how do I continue to apply my, my special sauce, right? Like at Intern Queen, our special sauce is our student network. We have students coming out of our ears that want awesome opportunities that companies would be so lucky to work with, right? That's our special sauce. You as a job seeker, like everyone, every one of you has your own individual special sauce. And so it's really a matter of saying like, how do I continue to, you know, use this special sauce, but kind of, work it a little bit differently, right? So for us, again, it was like, well, we can't do on-campus events, but how do we still engage this community? Well, we can do virtual events. So if you're, um, 
I don't know if you're an event planner, right? And you were going, you maybe your dream has been to throw big parties for movie stars, right? But now COVID, ah, what do you do? There's no events in person. Well, how do you translate that online? You know, all of the movie studios are doing um, virtual premieres for their movies now. How could you apply your creative event planning strategies to a virtual event so that it still feels just as authentic as special and special as an in-person event. So I think, again, it's thinking like, what is your special sauce? What what gives you a competitive edge? And how can you sort of rework that? Um, and again, Intern Queen's a good example because it doesn't look that differently for us, right? It's just, it's online instead of in person, it's fine. Um, so sometimes it might look massively different and sometimes it might just, you know, be a little, a little shift here and there. But um, I, I encourage you guys all to really think about what makes you special, especially those of you who are, who are looking for a job. Like, what is the most special experience you have? What is the biggest value that you'll bring to a company? And, you know, if there's a challenge because of the current climate, how can you pivot your own offering a bit so that you're still appealing to a company? Like, companies still need internal events, right? They still need things to build their company culture. If anything, it's more important than it was before since people aren't in person. So it's just about pivoting the offer. Yeah, no, I agree. So this I think has been immensely helpful and insightful to Good. all of us, myself including the audience. And so obviously before we end, yeah. we're doing our giveaway. So again, we are giving away three copies of Lauren's book, Get It Together. Yes. And um, when I shout out someone's name, I want you to respond in your chat with a hand up, you know, or just say, hey, it's me, um, just to make sure that 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 you're still with us. And so winner number one is Trish Rufino from Nebraska. Trish, are you still tuned in? If you are, could you just put in the chat and say yes? So I'll wait for her to respond. And if not, we will choose someone else. Okay. While we're waiting, mm -hmm. the second winner of your book. Yep, Trish is here. Woohoo! Okay. So sit tight, Trish, while I name off everybody else. Make sure that they're here. And then I'm I'm going to put in my email address. That way everyone you can email me directly and we will coordinate getting these books to you. Okay, so our second winner is Mariela Sulam. I hope I pronounced that last name correctly. Uh, Maria Sulam, I think that she is from San Francisco. So, Maria, if you're still tuned in with us, yep, she's here. Woohoo! And I know her <laughs> last name. <Okay>. Yay! <laughs> All right. And then our final winner is Madison Horn. Madison Horn is from Pennsylvania. So out east. So Madison, if you're still tuned in, please give us a shout out in the chat. So we'll wait and see. And if not, we will have to choose somebody else. But I hope Madison is still with us. Let's see. It's like, I feel like I have a Jeopardy you know, playing in my head to see if she's here or not. So we'll just give it a few more minutes. And if not, let's let's see if there's who else we can choose madison so madison might have dropped off okay so i'm gonna actually pick another person so i am gonna choose nicole infanzon nicole infanzon if you are still yay here, she's here nicole where are you tuning in from where are you from new york Yes, oh, cool. represent. <laughs> okay, awesome. So let me quickly put in my email address and that way. So it's Robin at moveuplevel.com, Nicole, Mariella, and Trish. Please reach out to me uh, uh, at my email and I will coordinate with Lauren's team to make sure that you get a copy of her new book. Lauren, thanks again for being so generous with yeah. you know, giving away your book. I think of course. that uh, I love the title, like Get It Together. I think it's it's perfect, you know, and I think that honestly, 
Um, there's a sense of kind of like wanting to get it together right now, you know, to really kind of like be on point, whether it is yeah. in your job search, right. Or in your day to day, how you start your morning. I mean, it all really matters right now. Yeah. So, uh, I think it's like such a great uh, book to be released at this time. Awesome. And again, thank you for your time. Yeah, your this was great. For your strategy and everyone remember every Wednesday we are live with a new either person that's going to be focused on up leveling your career or up leveling your business if you're you know new to entrepreneurship or even if you're not um, and remember that if you miss a session it will be on our website which is great so you can actually rewatch it at any time that is good with your schedule Lauren, again, thank you so much. This has been fantastic. <laughs> thank you to everyone that tuned in, and we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye thank now. you, Adam. Bye, everybody. Thank you.